Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very very good day to all of you. So for chapter number 4 part number 6 we will discuss about the turbine stage efficiency. Okay now we will learn about the choice of reaction choice of degree of reaction and its effect on efficiency. So in previous part we already learned numbers of equation in order to calculate the value of degree of reaction. Okay, but now we want to know what is what are the effect of degree of reaction value to the turbine stage efficiency. So now we need to refer to the graph that obtained by Shafiro 1957. So we need to manipulate the graph where we need to replot the graph again the degree of reaction R instead of Cy2 divided by U. Okay, if you look to the graph that obtained by Shafiro 1957, as shown in the slide. So the graph shows the relationship in terms of efficiency versus Cy2 divided by U. And the graph shows the data for total total efficiency and also total to static efficiency for different value of stage loading factor. Okay, now in order to replot the graph, we need to change the value of Cy2 over U in the Shapiro graph and replace with the value of degree of reaction, R. Okay, so before we change the, the, the parameter, we need to know the suitable equation that we need to use in order to change Cy2 over U to degree of reaction, R. So by referring to degree of reaction equation that we have learned, where R equal to 1 plus Cx over 2U multiplied by tangent alpha 3 minus tangent alpha 2 represented by equation number 1. And we know that if you refer to the basic velocity diagram, we know that Cy3 equal to Cx tangent alpha 3 equation number 2 and Cy2 equal to Cx tangent alpha 2 equation number 3. Okay. So substitute equation number 2 and also equation number 3 into equation number 1. So you get a new expression for degree of reaction where R is to 1 plus Cy3 minus Cy2 divided by 2U represented by equation number 4. And we have learned that work done in turbine is equal to delta W equal to U Cy2 plus Cy3 stated by equation number 5. Rearrange, rearrange equation number 5 so we get equation for Cy3 where Cy3 equal to delta W divided by U minus Cy2 shown by equation number 6 ok next substitute equation number 6 into equation number 4 so we will get a new expression for degree of reaction where R equal to 1 plus delta W divided by U sorry divided by 2U square minus Cy2 divided by U state, state by equ equation number 7 so in this equation the degree of reaction equation will involve the parameter in terms of uh, stage loading factor delta W divided by U square and also the parameter of Cy2 divided by U so it is clearly uh, from the equation equation number 7 if, you, if we substitute the value of Cy2 over U from the Shafiro graph into equation number 7 and also the value of stage loading, you will get the value of R degree of reaction. So by using uh, this equation, equation number 7, we can change the value of Cy2 uh, over U in Shafiro graph to degree of reaction value. Okay, the the second graph that shown in the slide, actually, we already replot the graph again at the degree of reaction R instead of Cy2 over U in Shafiro 1957 graph. So we use the data that we obtained from equation seven and replot the graph in terms of total to the efficiency versus degree of reaction value. So. Um, in the graph, the value of, as I mentioned before, the value of R that obtained in the graph actually come from equation number 7, where 
we need to fix the stage loading factor and also change the value of CY2 divided by U value according by referring to the graph that obtained by Shapiro 1957 and substitute the value all the value into equation number 7 okay so by doing this we will get a different value of degree of reaction and plot the graph okay so the graph the second graph will show the influence of reaction or degree of reaction on total to stress the efficiency with fixed value of stage loading factors as we as we can see in the graph we have three different lines so blue color line represent the uh, efficiency total to static efficiency data for stage loading equal to one the red color dash line represent for stage loading factor equal to two and green color dotted line represent for uh, stage loading equal to three and all this data that that, that used in the graph uh, total to static efficiency versus degree of reaction actually in term of parameter of investigation is specific for cx over u equal to 0 0.4 and h over b equal to 3.0 with Reynolds number equal to 100,000 okay in this graph there are two uh, important region that we need to prevent from uh, uh, we need to prevent from uh, because if we choose the value of degree of reaction that enter this region uh, the value of efficiency will reduce the first region is the region for r value greater than one so if r value greater than one the diffusion flow will occur in the nozzle and the diffusion flow will increase the tendency of separation flow in the nozzle and will cause reduction of efficiency of the turbine stage the second region is referred to the, reg the region where the value of R lower than zero, where the value of R will be negative, where diffusion flow also will occur, but now the diffusion flow occur in the roto, and will give the same the same effect where tendency of the flu separation flow will increase, and this phenomena will reduce the efficiency of the turbine stage. So from this graph, if you have the value of degree of reaction, and also stage loading factor you can determine the total to set efficiency for the turbine stage okay so if we go back to the uh, graph that obtained by Shapiro 1957 we can see there are two type of efficiency first we have total to static efficiency the second one is total to total efficiency so now maybe someone uh, you will ask why we don't have to replot the graph for total to total efficiency versus degree of reaction okay so to answer the question if you look back to the Shapiro graph at the upper upper part of the graph the total to total efficiency data for a fixed stage loading factor only small change in total to total efficiency when CY2 divided by U change as shown in the graph of Shafiro 1957 so we conclude that the total to total efficiency not greatly affected by the choice of reaction so that's why no need to replot the graph in term of total to total efficiency versus degree of reaction design point efficiency in term of total to total efficiency for degree of reaction equal to 0.5 so in this slide we, we will know we want, we will learn how to determine total to total efficiency value for degree of reaction equal to 0.5 so the performance of a turbine in terms of its efficiency are most usefully presented in the form of carpet plots uh, which is normally referred as the performance charts of stage loading of coefficient and also flow coefficient so before that I will explain the expression or the equation that used to derive the performance charts for R equal to 0 0.5 so based on the total to total efficiency equation with loss coefficient where we already learned this equation this equation when we discuss about the Soderberg correlation so now for this equation we consider small temperature difference where T3 divided by T2 equal to 1 and normal state condition C1 equal to C3 so we will have equation number 1 where 1 over mu TT total total efficiency equal to 1 
plus zeta r, the loss coefficient for in the roto, multiplied by w3 square plus zeta n, the loss coefficient in the nozzle, multiplied by c2 square divided by 2 delta w. Okay, equation number 1. Stage loading factor equal to delta w divided by u square. And rearrange the equation so you will get the equation for delta w in terms of stage loading uh, we call factor and also blade speed. So delta w equal to stage loading factor multiplied by u square represented by equation number 2. For flow coefficient, flow coefficient equal to cx over u stated by equation number 3. If we refer to the velocity diagram for r equal to 0 0.5 we will get symmetrical viscosity diagram as shown in the figure and for symmetrical viscosity diagram in terms of loss coefficient the value of loss coefficient in the rotor will be equal to the value of loss coefficient in the nozzle so zeta r equal to zeta n equal to zeta shown by equation number 4 in terms of um, velocity vector refer to velocity diagram so W3 equal to C2, equation number 5. And based on trigonometry approach, uh, refer to the blue triangle in the velocity diagram. So we know that W3 equal to, C, equal to Cx cos beta 3, equation number 6. So equation number 6 square, so we'll get equation number 7 where w3 square equal to cx square second beta 3 square also equal to cx square multiplied by 1 plus tangent beta 3 square represented by equation number 7 so now from equation number 2 to equation number 7 substitute into equation number 1 so we will get uh, the new expression for the total total efficiency where 1 divided by mu tt equal to 1 plus zeta flow coefficient square divided by um, I call the stage loading factor multiplied by 1 plus tangent beta 3 square represented by equation 8 from trigonometry law we know that tangent beta 3 equal to Stage loading factor plus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by flow coefficient represented by equation 9. From equation number 9, substitute equation number 9 into equation number 8. So we get the final equation that used to derive the performance charts where 1 over mu t t equal to 1 plus zeta flow coefficient square divided by stage loading factor multiplied by 1 plus bracket 1 plus stage loading factor divided by 2 multiplied by flow coefficient square as shown in equation number 10 represented by equation number 10 so this equation will use to plot this performance chart where this performance chart is uh, the, the data for total to total, total to total efficiency for 50% degree of reaction stage or r equal to 0 0.5 so this performance chart actually the data in terms of design point of total to total efficiency and also deflection angle contour for a turbine stage of 50% reaction so from this this graph uh, the graph shows the relationship in terms of stage loading coefficient versus flow coefficient and from the performance chart we can obtain the value of total to total to total efficiency and also the reflection angle in the turbine stage for degree of reaction of 0 0.5 so if you look at the graph the maximum value of efficiency is 92% where in terms of range of flow coefficient and also stage loading factor the flow coefficient range is within 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 and uh, sorry the range for flow coefficient within 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 and the range for stage loading factor is within 0 0.3 to 1.1 in order to obtain uh, what we call highest uh, maximum efficiency value 
uh, from the performance charts for degree of ration R equal to 0 0.5. So from the, date, the data of flow coefficient also stage loading factor, we can see that in order to obtain highest efficiency, we need to use low value of flow coefficient and also stage loading factor. Okay, for additional information, for aircraft turbine design, the value of flow coefficient will be within 0 0.5 to 1.5 and the range for the stage loading factor is within 0 0.8 to 2.8. If we plot on the performance chart, the red color region uh, represent the region that's suitable for the aircraft turbine design in terms of deflection angle and also total to total efficiency. So for example, you need to determine uh, the total, total, total to total efficiency and also the flash angle when the flow coefficient value equal to 0 0.4 and stage loading factor stage loading factor equal to 2.2. .2. So just draw the vertical line for flow coefficient equal to 0 0.4 and also the horizontal line for um, stage loading coefficient equal to 2.2. .2. So you will get the intersection point where uh, the point um, you need to make your own scale to determine the efficiency and also the deflection angle. So by using your own scale and also interpolation, so you will get the total to total efficiency more or less equal to 85% and the deflection angle is around 130 degree. Okay, now we want to look at design point efficiency for R equal to 0. We want to know how to determine total to total efficiency for R equal to zero. So before that, we want we need to know the expression or the equation that used to derive the performance chart for R equal to zero. So refer to the total to total efficiency equation with loss coefficient. And the condition we need to consider small temperature difference where T3 divided by T2 equal to one, and normal stage condition where C1 equal to C3. So we have question number one, where one divided by mu t t equal to one plus zeta r multiplied by w3 square plus zeta n multiplied by c2 square divided by two delta w. Equation number one. Stage loading factor. Equation number two, and flow coefficient psi. Equation number three. So if you look at the velocity diagram specific for R equal to 0, we will get the velocity diagram that's skewed to the left as shown in the figure. And in terms of criteria for the velocity diagram, in terms of loss coefficient for velocity diagram with R equal to 0, the value of zeta R and also zeta N is not the same. It's not the same. Okay as I mentioned in equation number 4 and if we base refer to the velocity diagram W3 will be equal to W2 equation number 5 beta 3 will be equal to beta 2 equation number 6 and C2 equal to Cx second alpha 2 equation number 7 and also we have the equation for W3 W3 equal to Cx second beta 3 shown by equation number 8 Use trigonometry to the velocity diagram and include equation 2 and also equation 3. So we will get that tangent beta 2 equal to stage loading coefficient divided by 2 flow co multiplied by flow coefficient. Equation number 9. Equation number 10. Tangent alpha 2 equal to uh, stage loading coefficient divided by 2 plus 1 divided by flow coefficient. And equation number 11, tangent alpha 3 equal to stage loading coefficient divided by 2 minus 1 divided by flow coefficient. And square root the equation number 7 and substitute with equation number 10. So you get equation number 12 where c2 square equal to cx square multiplied by 1 plus tangent alpha 2 square equal to cx square multiplied by bracket 1 plus stage uh, loading coefficient divided by 2 plus 1 square divided by flow coefficient square. 
ok square uh, square the equation number 8 and substitute with equation number number 9 also uh, equation number 6 so we'll get w3 square equal to cx square multiplied by bracket 1 plus tangent beta 3 square equal to cx square multiplied by bracket 1 plus stage loading coefficient divided by 2 multiplied by flow coefficient square equation number 13 Substitute equation number 2, equation number 12, and also equation number 13 into equation number 1. So, you will get final equation that used to derive the performance chart for R equal to 0. That represent by equation number 14. Okay. So, by using the equation, we can plot the performance chart for total, total efficiency of zero reaction stage or r equal to zero so we have relationship in terms of stage loading coefficient versus flow coefficient and uh, the performance chart describe the design point value for total total total, 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 total efficiency and also rotor flow deflection angle for a zero reaction turbine stage okay so the maximum uh, efficiency curve in terms of total total efficiency is 92% and the range of flow coefficient within 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 and the stage loading coefficient range within 0 0.5 to 1.5 in order to obtain maximum efficiency okay so in order to obtain higher efficiency we need to choose low low value of flow coefficient and also stage loading factor so performance chart for r equal to 0 actually represent a limit because if r lower than 0 will cause larger losses in roto that's why we don't have i will call the performance chart in terms of total total efficiency for degree of ratio lower than 0 so Let's say you have the value of flow coefficient equal to 0 0.4 and stage loading coefficient 2.3. So you can determine the deflection angle in the rotor and also the total to total efficiency of the turbine stage. Okay, so total to total efficiency is around 0 0.87 or 87% and deflection angle is around 140 degree. Okay, in previous slides, we already discussed about the design point efficiency in terms of total to total efficiency for specific degree of reaction. However, for this slide, we will discuss about design point efficiency in terms of total to static efficiency for specific condition where we consider as the single stage axial turbine, where the velocity at the exit of the stage is equal to the axial velocity. So, uh, in this slide, we will have the performance chart for single stage axial turbine where the outlet velocity at the exit of a turbine stage is in axial direction where C3 equal to Cx. So, before that, we need to know the expression or equation that used to derive the performance chart for single stage axial turbine. So, based on the total to static efficiency equation with loss coefficient, where we consider small temperature difference T3 divided by T2 equal to 1 and normal stage condition C1 equal to C3 so we will, we will have equation number 1 where 1 over mu Ts total to set efficiency equal to 1 plus zeta R multiplied by W3 square plus zeta N multiplied by C2 square plus C1 square Okay, divide by 2 delta W, which is stated by equation 1. Stage loading factor, represented by equation 2. Flow coefficient, uh, equation represent, represented by equation number 3. If we look at the velocity diagram for single stage axial, we will obtain the velocity diagram as shown in the figure, where for the outlet, uh, velocity triangle at condition number 3 so we have 
the value of absolute flow velocity for condition number 3 at the outlet will be in the axial direction where C3 equal to Cx. So because due to direction is in the axial direction, so alpha 3 in terms of angle, flow angle will be 0. Absolute flow angle will be 0. So alpha 3 equal to 0, C3 equal to Cx is the criteria for the axial flow uh, velocity. Okay. So in terms of loss coefficient, for this case, so zeta r is not equal to zeta n, state by equation number 4. And in terms of criteria for the velocity diagram, alpha 3 will be equal to 0, equation number 5. C1 equal to C3 equal to Cx due to the axial condition of flow, equation number 6. C2 equal to Cx second alpha 2, equation number 7. W3 equal to Cx second beta 3, equation number 8. So from equation number 2 to equation number 8, substitute all the equation into equation number 1. So we will get equation number 9, new expression for total to set the efficiency. Okay, by using trigonometry and also the velocity diagram, we will get the second beta 3 square equal to 1 plus tangent beta 3 square equal to 1 plus 1 divided by flow coefficient square represented by equation number 10 and also we have second alpha 2 square equal to 1 plus tangent alpha 2 square equal to 1 plus 1 divided by bracket stage loading coefficient divided by flow coefficient square represented by equation 11 Substitute equation 10 and also equation 11 into equation number 9. So we'll get final equation that used to derive and uh, the, the performance chart for single stage axial turbine. That represent by equation number 12. Okay, so from this equation, we can obtain the total to static efficiency contour for a stage with axial flow at the exit as shown in the figure. And this figure we consider as the performance chart for total to static efficiency of stage with axial velocity at the exit. Okay, so in this chart, we will have relationship in terms of stage loading coefficient versus flow coefficient. And in terms of data, we can obtain the data in terms of deflection angle in the rotor and also the total to static efficiency value. And this graph is valid for value of degree of action within uh, start from 0 to 1.0. So for, for total to static efficiency performance chart, there is no specific value of R. Uh, if you compare to the uh, performance chart for total to total efficiency where the chart is specific for uh, certain value of degree of relation. So for the performance chart for total to static efficiency, uh, we can use uh, the same uh, the same performance chart for different value of degree of relation. Okay, so if you look at the um, one of the degree of relation formula and we rearrange the equation by including uh, the parameter of flow coefficient and also stage loading coefficient. So we will get this equation where R equal to uh, flow coefficient divided by 2 multiplied by tangent beta 3 minus tangent beta 2 equal to 1 minus stage loading coefficient divided by 2. Okay. So if we substitute the value of stage loading coefficient into the this uh, degree of relation equation so we will get the value of degree of relation where if we uh, if we the value of stage loading coefficient equal to 2 the value of degree of reaction is equal to 0 so for this chart also we can uh, put additional exists for degree of reaction by using uh, this uh, degree of degree of reaction equation as shown in the uh, as, as shown as shown in the slide so sorry I, uh, so if you look 
a for the graph we we, we will have uh, two y axis so y axis uh what I call which is referred to the stage loading coefficient also the, the other one is referred to the degree of reaction okay so if you have flow coefficient degree of reaction you can determine also you also can determine the value of total to static efficiency and also the deflection angle in the roto okay so the maximum efficiency for the total to static efficiency also 92 percent let's say you have the flow coefficient equal to 0 0.4 and stage loading coefficient 1.0 so we will get intersection point and the intersection point also represent uh, call um, the data for degree of reaction equal to 0 0.5 so at the point we will get the value of r equal to 0 0.5 the total to static efficiency is around 86.2% and the pressure angle is around 70 degree. Okay, maximum uh, total to static efficiency of a reversible turbine stage. So in order to obtain maximum total to static efficiency, we need to consider the turbine, the turbine stage as a reversible turbine stage. Okay, for total to static efficiency, there are two cases. First case is we consider the turbine stage as actual turbine stage where we consider blade losses and also exit kinetic energy losses. For this case, for the first case, we will have the formula for the total to static efficiency uh, as shown by equation number one where total to static efficiency equal to bracket 1 plus zeta r multiplied by w3 square plus zeta m multiplied by c2 square plus c3 square divided by 2 multiplied by enthalpy different h1 minus h3 power of negative 1 for the second case the second case is for the ideal or reversible turbine stage so for this case we ignore the effect of blade losses and we just consider the exit kinetic energy losses so because no blade losses involved so zeta r and also zeta n will be zero that represent by equation number two and if you consider normal stage condition where c1 equal to c3 so we will have h1 minus h3 equal to h01 minus h03 equal to u multiplied by cy2 plus cy3 shown by equation number 3 so substitute equation number 2 and also equation number 3 into equation number 1 so we'll get the equation for total to static efficiency for the ideal turbine stage so we have 1 plus c3 square divided by 2u multiplied by cy2 plus cy3 power of negative 1 so represent by equation number 4 so we will get we will obtain maximum total to static efficiency if the value of c3 is minimum for specific operating condition in term of r flow coefficient and also alpha 2 value okay So in order to optimize the ideal or reversible turbine stage total to static efficiency for specific condition R uh, flow coefficient also alpha 2 So we need to consider two cases First for specific condition where uh, we have flow coefficient and also alpha 2 value So if you refer to the velocity diagram we will have cy2 equal to cx tangent alpha 2 equation number 5 cy3 equal to cx tangent alpha 3 equation number 6 and c3 equal to cx divided by cos alpha 3 equation number 7 and we know that flow coefficient psi equal to cx over u equation number 8 so substitute equation number 5 to equation number 8 into equation number 4 
So you will get the equation for total to static efficiency uh, for the ideal turbine stages where we consider specific condition of flow coefficient also alpha 2. So clearly from the equation number 9, the total to static efficiency equation will have the parameter in terms of flow coefficient and also alpha 2. Okay, to optimize uh, the the total to static efficiency or to obtain the maximum value of total to static efficiency, we need to derive equation number 9 and make it equal into 0. So, total to static efficiency will be maximum when the optimum stage outlet flow angle alpha 3 equal to pi divided by 2 minus alpha 2 represented by equation number 10. And this value we will obtain the value of alpha 3 or the, or the equation for alpha 3 when we derive the equation and also we solve the quadratic equation that produced by the derivation. Okay, substitute equation number 10 into equation, equation number 9. So, you will get the maximum total to static efficiency equation where mu Ts maximum equal to 1 plus uh, flow coefficient divided by 2 multiplied by cot alpha 2 power of negative 1 equation number 11 so so if we have the value of flow coefficient and also the value of alpha 2 so we can determine the maximum uh, I call total to static efficiency the second case if we know or the specific condition given are R value and also flow coefficient. So based on uh, what I call the degree of reaction equation, where R equal to 1 plus Cx divided by 2u multiplied by tangent alpha 3 minus tangent alpha 2, uh, which is represented by equation 12. For nozzle flow outlet angle alpha 2, equation 8, substitute equation 8 into equation 12. So we will get equation 13 where the equation, the equation uh, describes the equation for alpha 2 where tangent alpha 2 equal to, equal to tangent alpha 3 plus 2 multiplied by 1 minus r degree of reaction divided by flow coefficient psi. Substitute equation 13 into equation number 9. So we will get uh, what I call the specific total to static efficiency based on specific condition given R and also flow coefficient. So in equation 14, the equation for total to static efficiency will include the parameter of flow coefficient and also the degree of reaction R. Okay, so to optimize the uh, total to static efficiency in order to obtain the maximum uh, total to static efficiency equation, so we need to derive equation 14 and make it equal into uh, to make it equal to, to zero. So total to static efficiency maximum when when optimum stage outlet flow angle alpha three equal to uh, bracket pi divided by two minus alpha two divided by two represented by equation 15. So this alpha three equation actually obtained from the derivation and also from the um, uh, after we solve the quality equation that obtained from the derivation so we will get the value of alpha 3 or equation for alpha 3 that represent by equation 15 equation 15 substitute equation 15 into equation 14 so we will get the what I call the maximum total to static efficiency equation if the value of R and also the value of psi given or the value of flow coefficient given. So uh, mu Ts maximum equal to 1 plus psi multiplied by second alpha 2 minus tangent alpha 2 power of negative 1 represented by equation 16. So if we have the value of alpha 2 and also psi flow coefficient, so we can determine the maximum total to static efficiency for the reversible uh, turbine stage.
Okay, let's say we need to determine the value of R or the stage loading factor in order to obtain maximum total to, to, total to static efficiency. So what we can do, um, the degree of reaction R and stage loading for for maximum total to, to, to static efficiency can be determined by substitute the value of alpha 3 optimum in R and also stage loading coefficient equation. So by doing this, we can obtain what is the value of R and also what is the value of stage loading factor in order to obtain maximum total to static efficiency. To run state performance for reversible and also irreversible that introduced by Holock 1966. So Holock 1966 introduced the what I call the graph or the chart uh, for the total to set efficiency of a 50% reaction as the flow turbine stage as shown in the figure. So the figure shows the relationship in terms of stage loading coefficient and also flow coefficient in order to obtain uh, the total to set efficiency for the ideal turbine stage and also for the actual turbine stage. So in the graph, there are two cases. First, um, the what I call the graph shows the relationship in terms of total to static efficiency for reversible or ideal thermal stage that are presented by um, green color dash line. And the other one is the total to static efficiency for the actual case, sorry, for the actual case where we consider friction in the turbine stage okay so the graph um, that is used by Holock 1966 shows the effect of blade losses to the efficiency okay for the reversible turbine stage um, the case only consider exit kinetic energy losses without consider the blade losses so the equation that used to determine the curve for reversible um, called total to static efficiency is referred to the equation number one. However, for the actual turbine stage that consider friction, um, the case consider both blade losses and also exit kinetic energy losses. So the equation that used to determine the curve for total to static efficiency uh, for the actual case is referred to the equation number two where the value of zeta r zeta n that represent the what I call the loss coefficient in the rotor and also loss coefficient in the nozzle respectively the value of blade losses are based on the Soderberg correlation okay so if we if you have the value of flow coefficient let's say 0 0.6 and stage loading coefficient at 1.5 you can find the intersection point and then you can determine the value of total to static efficiency for the actual turbine stage where from this graph you will obtain the total to static efficiency for the actual one is around 81.5 percent and also we can obtain for the ideal case where total to static efficiency for the ideal case equal to 88 percent example 4.5 and as the turbine stage operate with fluid, fluid enter the inlet of turbine rotor at absolute flow angle of 70 degree and exit at absolute flow angle of 40 degree as shown in figure 1 as the velocity is constant throughout the stage at 400 meter per second the blade velocity of the rotor is 500 meter per second. Figure 2 and figure 3 shows the performance maps for a turbine stage at degree of reaction of 0 and 0 0.5 respectively. By referring to the velocity diagram at the inlet and outlet, determine A. Specific work, delta W, stage loading, flow coefficient, psi and also degree of reaction, R. Question B. Determine the total to total efficiency and deflection angle of the turbine stage by using the suitable performance map provided. Solution for example 
Okay, for answer the question question A, to in order to determine specific work, stage loading, flow coefficient, also degree of rotation. So you need to draw um, the velocity diagram based on the data given, and you need to decide your own scale to draw the velocity diagram. First, we know we already know that the value of um, u vector and the direction of u vector. So draw u vector by using a ruler and draw two lines to limit the distance of axial flow cx which is equal to 400 meter per second okay so the data in terms of flow angle for c2 already given which is equal to 70 degree so from the angle just draw the uh, line for the c2 vector and we can determine the magnitude or the value of C2 by measuring the C2 line but by using a ruler so the value of C2 equal to 1163.6 meter per second okay so we know that um, W2 plus U we obtain C2 by using the concept draw the W3 uh, sorry W2 vector where we just connect the point, the initial point for the C2 vector and also initial point for the U vector. So you will get the vector of W2. Where if you measure by using the ruler, W2 will be will give you the value of 716.0 meter per second. And from the vector also you can determine the relative flow angle beta 2 equal to 56. Okay, now determine uh, what I call the outlet velocity triangle or velocity diagram. So the absolute flow, flow angle for C3 vector already given, which is 40 degree. So, so you can draw the C3 vector and measure by using a ruler. So C3 will be equal to 57 C3 equal to 521.8 meter per second. And measure the angle. So the angle, the absolute flow angle for C3 alpha 3 equal to 40 degree. Use a similar approach to draw the uh, W3 vector. So measure by using the ruler. So W3 vector in terms of magnitude equal to 9 to 5.1 meter per second. And the relative and the relative flow angle for W3, which is equal to beta 3, equal to 64 degree. Okay, so we already complete uh, the data for the velocity diagram. So from the velocity diagram, we can determine the value of CY2, the Y component vector for C2. Okay, CY2 equal to C2 sine alpha 2. Substitute all the data that we obtain from the velocity diagram. So CY2 equal to 1093.42 meter per second. Similarly with CY3, so we can determine CY3 which is equal to C3 sin alpha 3. Substitute all the data they obtained from the VC diagram. So CY3 equal to 335.41 meter per second. Okay, we know that the specific work formula data W equal to U CY2 plus CY3. U, U value already given and CY2 and also CY3 already, we already determined. So substitute all the value into the equation of specific work. So the specific work will be equal to 714415 joule. For stage loading, stage loading equal to delta W divided by U square. So we already calculate the value of delta W and also we already uh, the value of base speed already, did, already given in the equation. So the value of stage loading factor equal to 2.857 more or less equal to 3.0 the flow coefficient cx divided by u will be equal to 0 0.8 and degree of reaction in order to determine the degree of reaction you can use any equation that you have learned for degree of reaction but the important thing is we need to use the equation that have enough information in order to calculate the degree of reaction so in this case, I will use this equation where R equal to Cx divided by 2 multiplied by U multiplied by bracket tangent beta 3 minus tangent beta 2. So all the data for the degree of reaction are the obtained from the velocity diagram. 
So the value of R more or less equal to 0 0.23. Okay, for question B, in order to, to determine the total, total efficiency and also the reflection angle, first you need to choose the proper, the suitable chart, uh, whether uh, the chart from figure 2 or the chart from figure number 3. Then, after you choose the suitable chart, then you can determine the total total efficiency and also the deflection angle from the chosen chart. Okay, so in order to choose the proper figure, so you need to refer to the uh, data or the answer that we obtain from question A. So we obtain the value of R equal to 0 0.23 and value is close to 0% because we make assumption at the value of R equal to 0 because we have we only have two options for figure number 2 the degree of reaction is equal to 0 and the figure number 3 the degree of reaction equal to 0 0.5 so the closest value for a degree of reaction for this case is 0 and we have the stage loading coefficient equal to 3 and flow coefficient equal to 0 0.8 okay so now because uh, the value of r equal to 0 so you need to choose figure 2 in order to determine the efficiency and also the, the deflection angle okay okay by using the value of stage loading coefficient and also the flow coefficient so we can obtain the intersection point in the graph on the graph and then by using your own scale and also interpolation, we can determine the value of total to total efficiency and also tot, uh, the deflection angle. So total to total efficiency that we obtain from the graph is uh, approximately equal to 84%. And the deflection angle is around 125 degree. Okay, in order to test your understanding for part number 6, chapter number 4, please answer the question. Question number 1. Why is the value of stage loading is not exceed 2.0 in the performance chart for total to static efficiency of stage with axial velocity exit? Question number 2. What is the parameter that neglected in efficiency calculation if the blade losses are ignored? Question number 3. What is the correlation that used to develop the Harlock 1966 graph? Okay, you have to answer the question by clicking the link provided in my blog. Remember that you need to know the password in order to open the link. The passport was given throughout the video related to this topic. The clue is also given in the link. Okay, that's all for part number 6, chapter number 4. Assalamualaikum.